first of all, this is easily the coolest name for a backpack company I've ever heard. Like the name alone was enough to get me. The other thing that drew me in when I first heard about Pack Animal, uh, I'm Nick, by the way, this is my channel Stridewise. I look at high quality, old fashioned uh, boots and bags and stuff. The other thing that drew me in was this neat video that started appearing on my Facebook feed once Google knew I'm the kind of guy who likes wax canvas backpacks. Like look at this insane video they made about a backpack. I'll just show you like 10 seconds of it. A good backpack isn't judged only on how it's made, but how it's used. No, your backpack probably won't have to beat up three mafia meatheads and haul away a load of their old gotten ransom cash, but it's nice to know it could. Introducing the Rally Pack. Anyway, as you may have gathered, I'm very easily marketed at, and I like to think that I have canvas backpacks and leather jackets and heritage boots so I can get into fist fights in sexy European cities. So the Rally Pack really appealed to me. It's available in four colors right now. Uh, I don't know if they'll all be permanent, but the green, black, and I guess sand colored, they call, they call it desert. Uh, these are the three ones that have been around since the beginning of the company. So let's talk about the materials and then we'll jump into the features, like what they've made with the materials and the price and the pros and the cons. Before I get into all that though, uh, I did manage to get a discount code for you guys. I need to stress that I got that discount code after I already got the bag and had used it for a couple of months. I didn't know that I was gonna manage to get one out of the company, uh, but I did. So you can get 10% off with the code stridewise10 if you like the bag. They literally just told me this like yesterday after I'd already decided to uh, yeah, review the bag and everything. Let's get into the materials, materials, materials. Materials, I have used this bag a lot, man. Uh, here's me unboxing it in December. As you can see, it's pretty stiff when you first get it. I've since taken the rally pack with me. Uh, it's called the rally pack, by the way, by Pack Animal. I've since taken it with me around Oregon and Idaho and Utah. It was with me when I went to uh, see Roseanneville and filmed some videos there in Utah. I just spent three weeks in West Virginia with it. I kind of stupidly didn't take much footage of the bag in these exciting locales, but here it is with me on the nine hour train ride to Pittsburgh. Uh, and here it is in the line for a COVID test in Hell's Kitchen in New York City. Not very impressive footage, I know but like, whatever, trust me, I've been using the bag a lot. And as you can see, it's softened up quite a lot. Uh, as in the initial footage when I first got it, it was very, very stiff. Now, kind of like a pair of jeans, it softens up with use. And it's also picked up like a fair amount of like a dirt as well, because I've just been throwing it around all over the place. Like this. And that like softening with time is a well-known property of twill. This bag is twill. What is twill? Twill is often contrasted with canvas. Like I have, uh, here it is. I have a canvas bag. And a twill bag actually from Filson. Um, this one here is canvas. This is the one from Filson, and it actually has twill on the back. They're both very like canvas and twill are both like very old timey ways of making really really durable materials. Like like bags in the 18th century were made of like thick canvas or twill. Like they're both really dense and really really resistant to tears and abrasion. The main difference aesthetically between canvas and twill is that a uh, twill has like these like diagonal lines and canvas is a bit plainer and to look at. Like it's plainer and smoother uh, and twill is woven into more complex textured structures than canvas. Uh, you're probably not that interested in learning about the differences between canvas and twill. Uh, I'm just like saying this because heritage style backpacks like these they're typically one or the other, canvas or twill. Denim is actually a kind of twill, by the way. Naked and Famous's best known jeans are called left hand twill. And like denim, twill softens up over time and gets a nice patina, especially when it's waxed. Waxing the twill, as this is, helps to enhance its water resistant properties, even though it's already quite water resistant because it is twill, first of all, which is very dense, but also because it is very thick. This twill is 18 ounces per square yard. Your average Levi's are like 11 or 12 ounces, more like 10 or 11 ounces actually. But your gear in the backpack is not just encased in twill. If you take a look at the inside of it, you'll see this is lined with waterproof ripstop polyester, see? So for starters, get this pop of color uh, you get when you open it up, which also makes it easy to see what's in your bag. And it makes it um, like a waterproof bag, almost. Like the outside is old fashioned waterproof, which is like really, really water resistant actually. But the inside is modern materials waterproof, you know what I mean? And the fact that it's rip stop means it stops rips. Like this honeycomb pattern you get here means that if you happen to get a hole in it, the hole won't get bigger and bigger over time because of like these reinforcement threads you get. Uh, so it's not technically a dry bag, like don't throw it in a pool, but absolutely any kind of storm will not get your insides wet here, which is cool. And the one other material I wanna mention here before we start talking about construction and stuff is this leather, right? 
which is really nice and thick and vegetable tanned. And it's really cool that it's vegetable tanned, right? Veg tanned leather ages better, it's more expensive and long lasting than chrome tanned leather, which like 90 plus percent of all leather in the world is. So what's up with all these leather straps? Well, let's talk about the design and the features. All right, so features. This bag is eight inches tall by 12 inches wide and seven inches deep, right? So that makes for a volume that's about 25 liters or 1,525 cubic inches. The first thing you probably noticed is that this is a roll top closure, right? Not a zip closure. Roll tops are more water resistant because you get multiple layers of twill over the opening instead of zipper teeth. And you also get a bit more flexibility with the size in that you can compress the volume like down when there's less stuff inside. But this isn't one of those really, really tall roll tops or anything, right? The primary downside with roll tops Besides the fact that they, I don't know, like they stand out a little bit more than regular zippers, you know, like it's it's less, uh, you're less likely to see a roll top on like a subway than you would like zippers, right? The main issue with them is that when you're on the go, it's a bit harder to get into a roll top than a zippered compartment. But Pack Animal addressed that uh, sort of inconvenience of roll tops with two really cool features. Number one, the roll top is secured with a stud closure, unlike a buckle closure, which is more common. So it's much more easy to get in and out quickly, right? Like. There you go. You're in the back. The other cool thing they did is that they put a zipper on the front of the bag. So it's much easier to get into, right? This zipper on the side gets you right into the inside. Um, but you can get into the inside of the bag with this. And this also helps you get access to the stuff at the very bottom of the bag. The other zipper on the front is like an actual like pocket to put stuff. I've got my glasses cases in here now, whatever. Um, and it's quite large, you know, you can fit like a book in there. You can like fit a magazine in there. And what I like is that when you're looking at the front of the bag, like sure, like you can see that the pull tabs here, but otherwise it's not really, it doesn't look like this is covered in pockets and openings. You know what I mean? It just like, looks like it has like some seams here. So I like that. And I like the bag has this sort of like combination of a uh, minimalist style, but still functionality, which I'm going to get into a little bit later on. On the inside, you've also got this padded laptop sleeve and a couple of little pockets for pens and wallets and stuff. If you want to safely hide a passport or something, but we still have to talk about these belts on the outside, which are meant to help you strap stuff to it, right? Like maybe say a jacket or maybe a giant water bottle um, because they are on top of this water bottle holder here, which is where I tend to put my glasses cases usually. <laughs> Finally, on the back, the part that goes against your back, you've got this nice quilted padding and you've got these straps for attaching your like rolling suitcase handles to it or to the sissy bars on a motorbike. Pack Animal is more or less the same company as Tobacco Motorwear, which does apparel and accessories for motorcycles, uh, as well as this uh, funnel I own as well. So that, like, that looks like just about everything that comes with the bag that I've mentioned here. Uh, there's also a sternum strap, which is great for spreading the weight and making it easy to carry a heavy load. And the bag comes with these two mysterious extra straps that uh, you use to basically like uh, tie shit to the outside of the bag, right? So I'm gonna show you how you can use these extra straps. The first way to use these straps is to hook them around the body of the back, leaving the back unencumbered. So like the quilted back part going up against your back, that's the only place that doesn't have the extra straps running around them. And you can use that to strap extra stuff to the outside of the bag, like I've done like with this leather jacket here. Um, also like they've got footage on their website of a guy like hooking his uh, skateboard and his snowboard to the outside of it if you wanna be even cooler than strapping a leather jacket to the back. Uh, that's one way to use these straps. The other way to use these straps is to run the straps over the padded part of the bag, like to run them over this side here. Um, this isn't when you're wearing the bag though. When you do that, this is so you can more easily attach it to the seat of a motorbike or an ATV or something that doesn't have the sissy bars you would normally attach the bag to. So those are the two ways you can use these additional straps. Uh, for me, who is not cool enough to ride a motorbike, I will just use them like this because I frequently have an extra jacket with me and I frequently have stuff that doesn't fit on the inside of the bag because I'm always stuffing this bag absolutely full of all my stuff because I do use it a lot because it's a cool bag. So price-wise, this bag right now anyway is $279 and with my 10% discount, it's $251. And that's actually very cheap. It might not sound it if you're used to wearing like, you know, nylon backpacks, but if you have a little experience in the world of uh, like heritage backpacks, you're probably pleasantly surprised by that. Uh, for some context, my Filson backpack, this one here, is $395. Uh, and I have a whole article that I'll put below on other good heritage backpacks. And whether it's Tom Beckby or LM Leather Goods or Bradley Mountain, you're probably not gonna find a heritage style backpack for under 300 bucks, not easily anyway. I'd say the closest thing price-wise to Pack Animal is Buffalo Jackson for $250, which is a cool bag. It's wax canvas and vegetable tan leather. 
But uh, it's not quite as functional as far as having like the waterproof lining, or, like a bunch of ways to strap stuff to the outside and so on. And I also just don't love those mesh water bottle holders. Winter Session has a couple of decent American made ones too for $289. But that one's, they're even less functional. They're very, very minimalist, which you might like, uh, but practically speaking, yeah, man, I, I think Pack Animal is a pretty good value uh, given not just the materials, which other companies have, but the design and the function as well. All right, so to sum up everything, um, Pack Animal does a really good job of combining heritage style and materials with modern design and functionality. I've said the same thing about Tanner Goods, that's like another company sort of in this space, um, but Pack Animal, I think, takes it to another level. It's a really innovative way of merging the old and the new. They had this really good line on their site actually. That they said bags fall into three categories. Fast fashion bags that fall apart after one or two years, over-designed technical bags with features we don't need, and heritage bags that look great but haven't been updated in decades and cost a fortune. That's a pretty cool approach. It's nice thick twill, it's waxed, and it's a roll top, and it's lined with rips up polyester, and all these things make it completely waterproof and resistant to wear and tear. It's also vegetable tan leather, which is a really nice touch. Uh, it's easy to get in and out of than most roll tops. I love the easy access pockets on the side and how subtle the pockets are as well. Like it's a bag that is eye-catching, but not too ostentatious, you know? Like it, it's simple, the pockets are hidden, but you can tell it's something special, right? Um, it's also quite inexpensive for a bag like this. The straps, yes, you can strap stuff to the outside easily uh, and also easily mount it to a rolling suitcase or motorbike. I love the sternum strap for heavy loads. I also really like the shoulder straps are so easily adjustable. Normally on these sorts of bags, you can only adjust like the length of the shoulder straps um, with like belts, like on, on my Philson Journeyman, for example, which is cool, but it's imprecise when you can only put it in belt loops. This is like a very precise, so you know, you have more a more ergonomic fit than you're probably used to with uh, heritage style backpacks. Potential downsides with the bag. Uh, these are just potential downsides. Whether or not they are depends on like your point of view, whatever. But uh, for starters, it's not as quick to get into as it would be if it had a zip on top, right? If this bothers you. Uh, if this bothers you as well, it isn't made in America. It's made in China with Chinese twill and leather. I firmly believe this doesn't affect quality at all. Um, but that is why it's cheaper than like a Filson bag or whatever. Like, like if you really want to keep as much of your money in the US as possible, uh, fair enough. But don't hear the word China and think, okay, it must be bad then, because that's just not how the world works anymore. Not in the 21st century. You can get fantastic stuff made in China. Grant Stone boots are another good example of like really astounding quality that just happens to come from China. Um, I'll link that video here where I talk about that a little bit more. Um, the sternum strap, uh, it kind of dangles down when it's not in use. You can't remove it, so I don't know, it makes it a little asymmetrical if that bugs you. Uh, it did pick up some loose threads. Uh, here on the inside, yeah, there, see? A little a little bit of twill is coming off there. Um, I can just like snip that really easily and it's gonna be totally fine. This isn't even really a downside because I can just like cut that, but I do wanna show that like a couple of loose threads came out over a uh, couple of months, a few months of pretty hard use. Uh, Design-wise, I like this kind of like stands out a little bit, but I know a lot of guys like heritage style backpacks, um, like my journeyman again, all the others that I showed you earlier, they like heritage style backpacks because they're so simple and understated. This is a little bit loud. Like the combination of like the roll top and the belt buckles on the side, uh, this leather is orange. It's not like a nice muted brown or anything. Um, that might be a, a little loud for some heritage guys who, you know, they like heritage because of simplicity. Um, finally, what I, on a related note to that actually, the loudness, what I, what I absolutely hate about this bag is this patch sewn to the front of it that says Pack Animal. Uh, I'm not paying a brand money so that I can do free advertising for them. Like, I think that's like the whole point of Heritage uh, Apparel as well, right? It's guys who don't want brands all over their clothes. So I, I absolutely hate this, but um, you know, that's, that's just me. All right, those are my thoughts on the Pack Animal Rally Pack, the, the, the bag for getting into fist fights in Europe with. Uh, I like it, it's a pretty cool bag, man. Uh, it's a bit louder than most heritage backpacks, but it's more functional as well. It's good, it's a nice balance, I think, and it's pretty cheap as well, um, especially with that discount code, if you use it. Uh, if you don't, that's totally fine as well. Just make sure you subscribe though, because I get a lot more backpack reviews, uh, jacket reviews, I'm gonna review this one I'm wearing eventually, uh, boot reviews and other kinds of like heritage, you know, high quality, old fashioned type apparel coming up.